Hello, I'm Florian Ehalt from the Department of Surgery at the Technical University in Dresden. Hi, I'm Gregor Bötticher, also from the Department of Surgery at the University Hospital in Dresden. Research on eyelid biology and function is desperately needed to advance our understanding of eyelid physiology and diabetes pathogenesis. Unfortunately, human eyelids from non-diabetic and type 2 diabetic patients are very difficult to obtain. The following video sequence will show you a protocol how to isolate human eyelids from partial pancreatectomized patients. The so procured eyelids can work as an in vitro system for functional analysis. The surgical resection of human pancreatic tissue is the precondition for the isolation of human eyelids. We rely on patients undergoing a partial resection of the pancreas for specific pancreatic pathologies as a source of human pancreatic tissue. The surgeon cuts in the pancreas and performs the partial resection. Afterwards, the pancreatic specimen is put on ice and carried to the Department of Pathology. The pathologist determines the amount of healthy appearing and soft pancreatic tissue to be procured for the eyelid isolation. At least 2 grams of pancreatic tissue are required for isolation. The tissue is placed in uricolon solution and carried on ice to the laboratory. The first step in the eyelid isolation facility is to measure the weight of the pancreatic tissue. The sample is then placed into a 10 cm dish. We already prepared one 500 ml flask with 150 ml of RPMI media and one 250 ml flask with 130 ml of RPMI media. We then add the digestion enzyme solution containing 1 ml of DNase and 20 ml of collagenase to the 250 ml flask and draw it up into a 10 ml syringe. The cleaned pancreatic tissue is then distended by the injection of the enzyme containing media and minced into small pieces to increase the surface area and facilitate the process of digestion. This mincing step is crucial because the distension by injection alone does not allow a proper distribution of the enzyme within the tissue. In parallel we assembled the digestion circuit as shown in this figure. The flow direction in the recorded chamber is in at the bottom and out at the top of the chamber. Afterwards we add the remaining enzyme containing media to the 500 ml flask up to a volume of 300 ml and then insert the thermometer. The recorded chamber contains a metal mesh with a pore diameter of 600 micrometer and three silicon nitride marbles with a diameter of 15 mm each. We transfer the pancreatic tissue into the chamber, insert the mesh, close the chamber and start the pump with a speed of 140 milliliter per minute. Once the temperature of the circuit achieves 37 degrees Celsius, we start to measure the time of digestion. The recorded chamber is shaken by hand according to the tissue composition. To determine the optimal time point to stop the digestion, we take periodic samples. Ditizone stains the separated eyelids red under the microscope. Once the eyelids appear to be separated from the adsinar tissue, we quickly stop the digestion by putting the heating coil on ice and adding 200 ml of cold wash media to the circuit. 
Afterwards, we collect the islet solution by inserting the sample tube into 250 milliliter falcons until the circuit is empty. The following washing procedure starts with the centrifugation step of 1000 rpm at 4 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. In the next step, we discard the supernatant, resuspend the islet solution in wash media, and distribute it in equal fractions to the 50 ml falcons. The washing proceeds with another centrifugation step of 1000 rpm at 4 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. As an optional step, we distribute the pellet into additional falcons beyond the original four, depending on the size of the pellet, in order to improve the washing. Again, we discard the supernatant and gently loosen the pellet. For eyelet separation from the adsina tissue, the different tissue densities of the two parts enable the application of a Ficol gradient. First, we resuspend the pellet in Ficol medium density 1.125 grams per milliliter. The pellet must be small enough to allow for homogeneous resuspension. Next, we slowly overlay this with the Ficol media densities 1.080, 1.060 and 1.037 with a volume of 10 ml each. Afterwards, we centrifuge the gradients at 2400 rpm for 20 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Now you can distinguish the different components separated by their densities in the fractions. First, we discard the upper layer consisting of fat and connective tissue. The fraction we now collect is the first layer of islet aggregate at 1.037 and 1.060 which mainly contains the isolated islets. For efficient isolation it is important to collect the fractions separately. We then collect the fraction of the second islet aggregate at the interface of 1.060 and 1.080 which contains less pure islets than the first layer. Next we add the wash media to a total volume of 50 ml in order to dilute the fecal gradient and centrifuge it at 1000 rpm for 5 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. We discard the supernatant by suction because the pellet might be very loose due to the fecal stain. Thus, we have to repeat the washing step with islet culture media at 1000 rpm for 5 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. In the last step, we resuspend the human islets in islet culture media and culture the collected islets in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. After this culture step, the islets are ready for further processing. This protocol should enable you to isolate human islets from pancreatic tissue after partial pancreatectomy. The rapid and cool transport of the pancreatic specimen to the islet isolation facility is important to preserve the better cell viability. The isolation team has to keep in mind that the digestion process is a highly dynamic procedure. The duration of the digestion process strongly depends on tissue composition, for example the grade of fibrosis and the ability of a sufficient enzyme injection into the pancreatic tissue. The individual adjustment of mechanical force within the recorded chamber and the length of the digestion process is crucial for good eyelid yield.